God will feature anything you've been entangled up with that wasn't godly. That has nothing to do with the next relationship if you want what God has for you. Right. Amen. If you want what God has for you, every relationship I was in that the devil taught me something in, developed me, I got to make sure that's dead. Yes. You can't put on the wall because you've been in devilish relationships the past 15 years. Right. Now you want what God got, but you got stuff built in your life that come from being, being in relationship with the devil and his children. Yes. So I got to make sure that I don't have anything that's preventing God from manifesting in my life. Amen. Getting the word is not enough. I got to live that word out. Amen. Being a theologian don't impress God. I got to live that word out. Look at Isaiah 54 and 17. God, I love you with all my heart. Amen. Amen. The New International Version said, no weapon forged. The King James said, no, no weapon formed. Mm -hmm. No weapon forged against me will prevail. Amen. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. The word forged now is a is, is very interesting word. The word forged is formed or formed by pressing or hammering with or without heat. When I forge something, I make it be something it wasn't. You know, a blacksmith forged certain things. Right. Mm -hmm. They make it something. It was so you 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 build. Uh, 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 you make sure the enemy has to build something in you that doesn't belong to God. True. Look at this. This is this is. I like this one. Uh, made in a desired shape by heating or hammering okay. a forged blade or or cold forged steel. Now, here's the thing. Here's what you got to understand. This is when you get into an iniquity. Because iniquity, you find the word bent. The Hebrew word bent. Something that has been going on in your life to make you a certain way that you wasn't. I was nice. I was sweet. But that didn't get me nowhere. You know, they say, well, listen here, man. Nice guys finish last. <laughs> then you get a little rough. <laughs> Challenge you, don't you give your don't you give no man everything. They ain't gonna do nothing. Listen. When people start telling you about their devilish experience, wanting to rub it off on you, right. you got to reject that. Yeah. Right. You don't even entertain them conversations. Right. Right. Child, let me tell you something. Ain't no, all, all the good men are either gay or they married. Or they, no, no, no. No, for you they are. Right. <laughs> for you they are. Mine just got to go see on Cheryl get his glasses fixed and see where I'm at. Get in, yeah, come on now. Where are you here? Dummy, you've been walking past me. Come on now. All right. Look at this definition. Made falsely, especially with intent to deceive. Talking about forge. To make you think you're successful without God. Now, the only way the devil can make you think you're successful without God, he got to change the definition of success. Right, right. So you get a house and a car and you think you're going to ride. Come on now. Mm -hmm. these, these preachers get a jet and a, and a rose, and all of a sudden they, be some, they become something that, that totally not what God intended. Right. Arrogant. I mean, you, they, well, some of them, that's just my makeup. You know, some of them, you'll never, you'll never shake their hand. I remember when we was going to one conference, or we was going every year. I just knew this wasn't for me. I'm not that sneak me out the side dope type preacher. I just never was. And then when I went to uh, L.A. and um, to uh, uh, Fig River, where Dr. Price was uh, over his fellowship, and he sat right there until everybody was finished. Now you talk about I'm about thousands of people in the auditorium, and he just said, sometimes they give him a chair. He, he, he ain't moving. Right. And he waits around and look. Anybody else want to talk to me? Right. He's the one that taught me, you don't be walking through the church. Somebody want to talk to you, stay, stay in one place. You can't be rolling around the church trying to speak to everybody. Say so you sit right there. Sit right there. People want to talk to you. Everybody don't want to talk to you. Right. Right. <laughs> they don't want to talk to me. Why they don't want to talk to me? Right. Right. 
Some people don't want to talk to you. So you stay right there. People don't want to talk to you, they'll find you. If you stay put, they'll find you. Come on now. Right, right. Amen. And depending on how important it is, will determine how long they want to wait. Right. And, and, and when we used to go to New York, when he used to teach us on Thursday night, we used to drive up to New York every Thursday to hear Dr. Price. They would have him, him, and, his, him and his wife, uh, Dr. Benny, would sit in the chair, and you got to go in the room. Now, and some people just wanted to say hello. Some people had something they wanted to ask. You ain't get no counseling. You understand? So sometimes you can't allow stuff to change what God calls success in your life. Amen. So if, if the devil forwards something against me, if the devil has made me a certain way, I got to come out of that thing. The, the way that it prevails is that it interferes with what God wants to do in my life. Mm -hmm. So he forwards something in you to make you think you're more than what you really are. Mm -hmm. you, thought, you think you're a success because you got more than the other people in your family. Mm -hmm. That's forged. Right. Right. You understand that? Right. You're, not, you're not what you think you are. And that's why you don't gravitate to people that got more than you or people that can teach you something because you don't look like a diamond right. when you around, come on now, right. other diamonds that got a better cut, a different, you know a diamond ain't a diamond. Y'all know that, right? right? They even got some diamonds now that they didn't know was diamonds. You know, black diamonds. And uh, man, I'm telling you them things cost you something. Well, you know, you, you, you look special when you're hanging around people that's less than. I told y'all this. I was in high school, and I asked this girl. She was, you know, she, she wasn't ugly, she, and uh, she was fairly attractive. On a scale of 1 to 10, she made about a 6 or 7, pushing it, you know what I mean? And uh, so I asked her, I said, well, why do you always hang out with these busted girls? And she said, well, when I hang out with them, they make me a 10. <laughs> she knew she wasn't all that. But if I hang out with people that's worse than me, I stand out. Right. I look good because everybody else is just busting. <laughs> make sure you're not connected to people because they make you look good. Right. Right. Stop. See, your success is forged when the devil takes your car. That's why you spend so much money on a car. Mm -hmm. Can I, I'm going to share this with you. You take it any kind of way you want. I just feel like fighting anyway. <laughs> you're a fool to buy a luxury car and own my home. Yeah, true. I wasn't going to say idiot, but I changed my mind. <laughs> changed my mind. <laughs> you are a cotton-picking fool. If you are buying luxury cars, and don't, you know why? Somebody forged the definition of success. Yeah. Right. Right. Hey, my you got that little car? Oh, where you going? Where you going? <laughs> now, come on. The goal is to get something reliable. Right. Not something to make you make people think you something you're not. Right. Right. Let me go a little bit faster. Right. Right. I'm, feeling, I'm just feeling, feeling myself. Yeah. I'm feeling myself. Feeling myself. When your car payment starts to get close to what you're paying rent, you a better idiot. Yes. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> so therefore, you got to get to the place that I don't let the devil forge. A definition of success because I waste a lot of good money right. trying to show people I'm successful and I ain't really successful at all. <laughs> Everybody that got something that sparkle don't mean they're wealthy. Right. Yeah, that's true. Don't, don't, don't believe that. <laughs> don't believe that. Don't think every big house got rich people living in it. That's true. Right. Don't think every luxury car got rich people driving in it. Are you listening? Amen. When the devil forwards something in your mind and in your heart, he gets you hungry to do something that's totally against your purpose. And you get hungry and excited about obtaining things that God has nothing to do with. So therefore, I've got to get to the place that I'm not trying to get cars and houses and, and, and nice clothes and my hair done and my hair shipped in and nails sparkling. Come on now. Shoe. Come on. You, you don't want that. You don't want that. I tell people this all the time. I buy my wife red bottoms. She has never once asked for one. She's never asked for a pair of red bottoms. Never. I spend, I, we go to the Fendi store, I bought my wife some Fendi shoes, and until this day, the seller still send me personal emails. 
right around December. Hi, <laughs> oh, Mr. Hatcher. We know that your wife's birthday is coming up. And we just want to know if we can assist you in making it a success. No, you can't assist me. <laughs> My wife, no, she, she's never asked for those shoes. Never asked for them. She's never went to the Fendi store and said, ooh, those shoes right there. Yeah, the, the $1,200 ones. I don't know. She's never asked for those. Because if you think a good man is just a man that will buy you stuff, you'll be looking for the wrong thing. My wife went, we went somewhere, we were shopping somewhere, we separated. I went one place, she went somewhere else. And she, now, you, it is what it is, you wear what you wear. Don't get crazy, all right? Don't get stupid with me. She went into Nine West to go get some boots. I looked at them boots, I said, they look like Nine West cheapest boots. She said, well, I, got, I need some black boots. I got them. I said, you take them boots back. <laughs> she was happy and content with Nine West boots. Now, and now, don't get mad at me if you got Nine West on. I'm just talking. I'm trying to let you know, if she had come to me to get stuff, right. Right. she'd have missed everything. Because she'd have went to the high school, the person with the most money. Right. <laughs> Make sure the devil hasn't defined what a good man is to you. Right. Right. Because you've been looking for a man to buy you stuff instead of a man that will rub your feet when you get home from working all day. So she took them boots back and we went to Macy's and got something I like. Now, now, now listen, listen, you got, to, you got to hear what I'm trying to tell you. The moment the devil starts helping you define anything, you in trouble. Yeah. A good woman ain't, ain't got big titties in a round butt. <laughs> that don't make a good woman. Amen. You stupid, you're an idiot if you think so. Amen. Long hair and, and fake eyes, come on now. That don't make a good woman at all. Amen. Come on now. Even though the, the, the eye change up is kind of nice, you know what I mean? You mean I have to do it all the time, but every once in a while, boy, you drop them hazels up in there. Bam! It's going to be a nice. You understand? I mean, but you got to know the devil tell you what a good woman is, you're going to mess up, and you're going to get married more than once. That's true. Come on now. Come on. Let me go a little bit further since I'm already, already out there. <laughs> if you're in the club looking for a good woman, you stupid. Amen. <laughs> Well, you can't downplay the women in the club. No, I'm not downplaying them, but I'm talking about, about white material now. Amen. I'm talking about white material. But there ain't nothing going wrong with di dipping in and out the club. Listen, ain't, I didn't say nothing wrong with going in and out the club. I'm just talking about you dealing with a different class of woman. Amen. Y'all don't like that. I know. Because y'all want, want to conform your way of life to be universal. It's just as good as the rest. The devil is a liar. Right. Where you go every Friday? Every Friday I get in there by 10 because I get in free. <laughs> <laughs> if clubbing is your life, I'm not talking about going to celebrate somebody's birthday and all, but you know what a club life is. Come on now. Right. You're always looking for somebody to buy you a free drink. You no good for nothing, right? <laughs> I done talked to two different military guys. They told me in certain countries, you go into the bar and pay for a girl drinks, oh, you getting that booty up. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Oh, ain't nobody paying for your drinks enough. <laughs> yeah, that was just a, that was like an unspoken rule. And you go in there if you want to, tell myself, buy me a drink. He said, oh, sure. <laughs> getting no beat is easy. <laughs> <laughs> now, you go run into the police. and he raped me. He said, but no, no, office, I paid for a drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you how you hopping in these clubs? Dress to get free drinks. You ain't going in dress. You ain't going to enjoy your company. You dressing for the club. Free drink dressing. Come on now. Come on. You know you ain't no chuck that. The little you got going up to your chin. You push that, push it up, put it, up, put it up. Sir. Child, you call your friend and pull that, pull the strap up so don't put it in. It won't go no further. Oh no. <laughs> Give me some socks and stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> you don't wear clothes that fit. You wear clothes that's extra too small. Clothes that fit, you gotta pay for your own drinks. <laughs> Come on now. But if I can get something a little bit too small, 
just a little bit review. Just a little bit review it and get free drinks all night. Well, you see, those type of women is not what you want to take home. My son better not bring nothing like that home. <laughs> Who the idiot? I ain't even gotta worry about it, cause his sister, Lord Jesus, Alex is way flexible than Brandy. Brandy don't want no one. Lord Jesus, my wife told me the other day, said Brandy said she don't want her brother to date nobody from Cumberland County. I said, well, I'll be done. <laughs> the whole county said the whole don't want nobody from. Now she didn't spell me walking around trying to find her brother a wife. <laughs> Come on now. You, you got the, the devil can't help you. A woman that knows how to dance is not a good woman. That they may be sexually attracted, but they're not going to make a house a home. That's right. That's right. Come on now. Like, stop it now. Stop looking at me deep. Like, you know, I don't understand. You know what I'm talking about. Man, she whining and dancing and moving and all that stuff. Child, you looking at her. Oh my God. And you think you want to just take her home and you start role playing what it's going to be like. What the fights are gonna be like? What the arguments are gonna be like? Mm -hmm. Till you get home. Right. When the devil help you to find what a good woman is, you can expect hell yes. in your home. Yes. So, so if, if I get any information from the devil forge anything to me, I need to reject. It. Amen. Amen. Now I'm not saying you got to go get something you don't like. It's not what I'm saying. Right. But I'm saying is you need to, you know, Martin Luther King started talking about the character and the, the person's heart and all this stuff. But well, that ain't just ain't for white and black. That's, That's right. for some of y'all how y'all pick your friends. Right. You need to make a declaration. I will not pick another man based off the car he drives or the color of his hair. Yes. Come on now, I'm not even got to come on. Because if you get caught up in the wrong thing. Yes. So true. So true. Amen. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, not him. He said, why not him? Oh God, he, he looks hideous. Mm. Oh, he does. Mm. Who you want? Oh, him. The one that did you date last year? Yeah, I still love him, child. <laughs> Didn't he dislocate you on outside? Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was just one time. <laughs> yeah, the eye was one time. <laughs> then there was the nose, the tooth. <laughs> Come on now. Mm -hmm. Ain't the one that twist your arm? Right. Yeah, but he, oh my God, he's so gorgeous. <laughs> See, the devil has formed something in you. Right, yes, yes, yes. And that stupidity gonna get you killed. Yeah, right. right. The next Monday, somebody to beat you with a, a telephone. <laughs> they say, him don't leave the marks like, <laughs> like a fist wheel. What? Try to put that bell on that and book across your head. <laughs> don't let the devil help you in your relationship. <laughs> now, everybody wants something different. Everybody don't need them. For me, I don't care what a woman shape like. I don't care how long her hair is, eye color. If she can't cook, she can't do nothing for me. Amen. I'm telling you that. I'm just, listen, it only make no sense for us to waste each other's time. If you can't cook, I'm telling you, right, you need, you're, what? Amen. I said, look at this. Look at what? <laughs> Child, you, you better get something that learn what a pot is. <laughs> can't, can't even boil water. The tea killer whistling, she don't know who's playing that song. <laughs> <laughs> I have the tea killer, baby. No, you No, I'm not gonna listen to me. Food is now every man don't need food. Some men eat out every day. I need food. If you can't cook, we got a we got a major problem. Come on now. I, my wife and I fight when she cooked too slow. He said, how you cook too slow? Start to rise up fast or something. Help the heat, the friction in that heaven get done. <laughs> Every man needs something different. So I'm not trying to tell you to get what I got. I'm not trying to define for you. But I'm just telling you, don't let the devil help you. Right, right, right. Tell me, don't you marry the woman for the looks. Right, right. You ain't been around long enough. Let me tell you something. The more looks are important, then that tells me how immature you are. Right. And you ain't got to marry God's little sister. Right. But I'm telling you right now, when them looks don't, Lord have mercy. Let me get off that. I see some of y'all ready to pick somebody. And, uh, so I got to make sure the devil hasn't helped me to give me a false image of what, what a good man is, what a good woman is. I can't allow the devil to help me with my success. 
my, my success. It is the devil's job to mess up my, my, my beginning so that when God steps into my life, I, I will already be, my mind will be tainted, perverted, and now I can't receive from God because it's not dressed the way I want it to be dressed. It's not looking the way I want it. It is his job to get into your life early with the wrong man and with the wrong woman that you'll never feel like I'll never give anybody my all again. You can't do that. Now, let me tell you something. I just, this is the, 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 the God's honest truth. Uh, Yolanda has a, my, everything. I don't, is, there's nothing I have that she can't put her hands on. Money-wise, uh, it don't matter. It, doesn't, it just don't matter to me. Like, literally, my everything is on the table. Completely naked, nothing hidden, nothing uh, uh, in the closet. This is all that I am. Boom, here it is, right there. Now, if I had been giving somebody my everything, Back when I was out there acting stupid, man, I'd be all messed up. All messed up. The problem is you're giving people your everything that don't qualify. Amen. If he didn't, no, if he, no, it's, it's, it, 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 you know, you should, you can put a ring on it. No, it's not a ring on it, stupid. It's at the altar. Kiss him in the mouth and say, I do. Just because he put a ring on there and he's five, 15 year engagement, I understand what your problem is. Take more than the ring for you to give everything. Yes, Let me get off this. Some of y'all already got to the ring. <laughs> he wants, listen to me. Every time the devil wants to do something, he tries to put people in your life that will mess you up. He wanted to kill the Hebrew boys. He wanted to kill, he wanted to kill, when I say Hebrew boys, not the, the Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, but talking about Moses. When he wanted to kill Moses, <laughs> Keep in mind, Moses had to survive that thing. God put people in your life to help bring you out of a place yes. that the devil wanted to destroy yes. you in. Yes. He wanted yes. to kill Jesus. Yes. But still, Jesus yet made it to the cross. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, you have to understand something. When God has a plan for your life, you've got to allow God to keep the right people in your life so that he can now have great impact. So true. If you are gravitating to the wrong people, there's a good chance you are pushing away the people that can be a help in your life, to your life. Amen. The devil has a plan for you. The same way he told, he told a lie, the king told a lie to the wise men and said, when you find him, tell me where he's at so I can come and worship him. The same way the devil will lie and plot and scheme in your life. He's trying to mess up your future. Trying to mess up what God wants to do in your life. That's why when you get so messed up, the, the, the foundation of your relationship with God is, God, I need you to do this for me. Amen. Why? Because you're all messed up. You feel like, oh, my God, it's hard for me to give God anything because I, I got to need so much myself. But the moment you get to yourself that it's better for me to give than to receive, I trust God that he's going to make every wrong thing the devil has done, he'll make it right. Yes. Yes. What's in you that stops you from being sold out to God in your praise? Mm. Now, if, if, if you're macho, then I got to die. Amen. I just never been in that environment, well then you need to get in that environment. I can't allow anything to stop my praise. Amen. Psalm 100, verse 1. Psalm 100, verse 1. says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye land. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all ain't making no noise because it ain't part of you. Sure. Serve the Lord with gladness. gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Yes. So if God is asking for this and I can't give it, I got to deal with the why. Yes, right. yes. The why sets me free, liberates me, delivers me that I can now obey God when I come into his house. I cannot expect God to be all that in a bag of chips for me, and yet I cannot get to a place that I'm willing to give him my everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Yes. Be thankful unto him. Yes. Bless his name. Yes. For the Lord is good. What, yes. what stops you from doing that? Have you been in an environment where y'all talk about your problems all the time? Talk about all what the devil has done all the time? I don't want to hear that weak stuff. That's right. 
Now, I go, I go through a lot of stuff. I really do. I go through a lot. I deal with a lot of challenges. I have to overcome a lot. Uh, and I don't, I don't play that, that garbage, you know. Who, who did the pastor talk to? <laughs> what do you mean, who, what? Don't, don't listen to me. The worst thing you ever can do as a pastor is call me, trying to act like we're supposed to be licking each other's wounds. Right, right. We there for the people. We there for our family. But nobody there for us. But get over it, Pop. Yeah. Ain't nobody supposed to be there for you. You're supposed to rely on Jesus. Yeah. Call on Jesus. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You can't be sitting over there crying because you know what happened with that? Then you start resenting people because they're not concerned right. about it. Come on now. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let uh, the holders go home and sit Junior down. Say, now, Junior, they say, now, these are the bills. And we may not have all the money. And this is what we need. He said, what? Y'all fell it over. Get my toy, please. <laughs> the matter of fact, y'all, you go get the toy, you go give me something to snack on. All right? Y'all get back. We go, I'm catching the bottle when they got. That's y'all business. <laughs> Come on now. Right. I, how you looking for the sheep to be talking to the shepherd? That's right. Yeah. That's right. No, you can be concerned. But the night when, you, when, the, when the shepherd going to the sheep, y'all don't care about me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone you don't even think you need. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. 
Why do you think people can think they're all right because they got a good job, a decent 401k? Why do you think people, they, they, I don't need to go to church. I got God in mind because they're not humble to God. Mm -hmm. True. The moment you get humble, you start to submit. You start to comply. Right. Oh, let me help you to this. Psalm 18 and 6, my last verse for this. That's not really for, but for the day it will be. Psalm 18 and 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. Now, that is significant for non church goers. Okay, let me, let me read it again. In my distress, I called upon the Lord mm -hmm. and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. Uh -huh. And my cry came before him even into his ears. Yes. Now, here's the thing. One, if I got a problem going to church, then if I got a problem connecting with God on the level he has declared is all right. Right, right. Now, if you are a type of person that when you're in distress, you don't cry out to God, you handle it. Because you, you, oh man. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to be dealing with all that. I'll handle it. No, no. God said, I want you to depend on me yes. when you're in trouble. Yes. When your children start acting crazy, God's not looking for you to try to just handle it. He wants you to talk to him. That's right. Come on, Come on now. That's right. Now, see, here's the thing. That's why you need to learn how to pray. And prayer can't be this rhythm and this rhyme. Because you put the rhythm and the rhyme take you where you don't even need prayer for. Oh, come on down here. Come on down here. See about me, Lord. God don't need to see about you. Your child is acting crazy. Right. Cut the garbage. Father, I need help because she had crazy and I don't know what to do. Yes. But you start hearing on the next thing you know, you start rhyming. <laughs> Come see about me. It's me, it's me. It's me, it's me, Lord. Come on, Lord, get with me. You know I need you. You know I gotta have it. No, 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 son, calm down. Calm down. Talk to God for you. God, I don't know what to do with my work. God, my son is not being submitted to my teachings. God, I don't know what to do about this woman. God, my man is not acting like he loves me. God, See, prayer needs to be more than just a rhyme and a reason and a, and a rhythm and a beat and a, a hum. And True. Prayer needs to be real. Yes. A real conversation with God about what you're going through. Amen. So when I get to the place in my distress, I can come to God. You know, sometimes even in, in your singing, it can be a cry out to God yeah. for him to come see about you in your distress. Amen. Amen. That's true. Are you listening? Amen. There are some songs you just don't sing. I was listening to a song this morning, and um, and I, I, I remember this song, and the older people used to sing this song. There's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. What, what are you talking about death now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... Wait, no, I don't want your soul moving. <laughs> but when I have a song that is that's real from my heart, I not only acknowledge it with the words of the song, it becomes my cry to God. <clears throat> See, uh, when your voice is heard in the house of God, see now this this is especially for my men, because I can't never let the devil make me so macho I can't cry out. Amen. I can never listen to so I, I, I will uh, I walk out of here. I wait to, you know, I promise you. No, you're in the temple now. And you ain't got keys. You gotta do it now. <laughs> so even in your song, in your praise, come on now. Yeah. In my worship, yeah. I got to cry out to God. Amen. Amen. Yes. So when you get to the place that I can't let the devil make me something that interferes with me connecting with God. There's too many things for me to do for me just to get focused on the ability of God. Mm -hmm. Most Christians know God's ability, but they don't know their part to make it come to pass. Amen. And because of that, we don't have manifestation. And because we don't have manifestation, the church is a big joke now. Mm -hmm. 
People make fun of us. People make fun of what we believe and how we live. Mm -hmm. But that's because we don't have any manifestation. Get to the place that the devil will not have any impact yes, on what God wants to do in your life. Father, I thank you. thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your children. They come to this place to get more of you, to grow in you, to triumph in you. I pray, God, that you would allow this word to fall on good ground. That your children would not leave the way they came. And they would hear this word, understand this word, and allow this word to manifest in their life. That we will be liberated and delivered from everything that's interfering with our submission to you. Mm -hmm. Show me myself that I may grow in you, that I may represent you well in the earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.